Hi everyone and welcome to episode 102 of the Talk is Cheap show. We're here live in the AFTV studios here in North London, salubrious surroundings. And we've got a great show lined up for you today. But before we get started in earnest, allow me to introduce our star studded lineup. Joining me to my left, a man who really needs no introduction, but it would be remiss of me not to put the re proper respect on his name. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give it up for my good friend, co-host, resident expert, show analyst, social media content award winner, star of Late Night Show, <laughs> Talks What Radio, Mr. Curtis Shaw from Curtis Shaw TV in-house. What are you saying, bro? Hey, come on, the check's in the post, you know. That's a real <laughs> entrance, you know, I'll tell you. The check's in the post. Well, we've got a lot to live up to today. Bro. Yeah, you know well, I mean? big up, man. Happy to be here. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. That's good. And... To my right, it is truly my honour and pleasure to be able to introduce a man who I got to know a few years back now, but who I now consider to be a very good friend. A man who I admire, not just for his obvious sporting talent, but because he's a real cool guy and his class and professionalism is top notch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, senior citizens, please put your hands together and give a big digital round of applause for the former Southern area light heavyweight champion, the former English light heavyweight champion, no, I'm and still now English. I'm still the English. They oh, you're still there. Okay. Yeah, they no taking form. Off no form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, okay. I'm still, I'm still the English. Okay, yeah. <laughs> English light heavyweight champion, and now a new, newly crowned British light heavyweight champion, Mr. Dan Super Aziz. Come on, bro. What's going on, man? What are you saying, bro? What are you saying, yeah. man? You're good. You're right, I know you me. sparked a few yeah. mama yeah. life fists, didn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, thank you for having me, guys, man. No, it's I a appreciate real pleasure to have you in the house, man. I mean, professional record, man. 15 fights, 15 wins, no losses, no draws, 10 by big knockout, man. What can I say? That's it, man. The proof's in the pudding. We train hard, work hard, and we produce the... Good Jeez, look at the hardware. You know I mean? Look at that, man. Isn't well, that I'll, impressive? I'll come down, bring some silverware, Dan. Do you know yeah, what we mean? truly appreciate so, yeah. it. And Dan is a big Arsenal fan as well. He's been come on, on AFTV before. But before we get into things, just tell, yeah. spend a little couple of minutes talking about your fight. Yeah. Which took place a couple of weeks back. I was in the house. It was a great occasion. Um, but tell us a little bit about that. This is the night you um, fought for the British light heavyweight title. Um, yeah. Tell the people, bro. Yeah, tell so... Um, November 20th, I fought for the vacant uh, British Light Heavyweight Championship against um, Hosea Burton, who is um, Tyson Fury's That's cousin. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, he's very he was there, wasn't he? Yeah, Tyson yeah. was there. Yeah. He was a very, he's very experienced. He's been a holder of the British um, Championship before. And yeah, um, I got the victory, stopped him in the seventh. Uh, it was a very good performance. Absolutely. Um, Tremendous. Everybody's problem. been saying, I know I can do better, but you know, yeah, we brought home the goods none, regardless. And yeah, um, hopefully you should be seeing me on your, your screens more often, um, trying to collect some more belts and just keep climbing that, um, that, that ladder to get to the top, man. Um, trying to be the world champion. Yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? So, We're back in your order. Yeah, I'm so your you've been there from the start. You've been there from when I won the Southern area. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. South of England champion. Then yeah, yeah. from that to the English champion. Now and British. now we're, we're the British, um, I'm the British champion, so yeah. No, and I'm just yeah. going to say, I'm keeping it 100, man. Yep. And um, you know what I mean? Like, and I really mean this, like, you have been a real pleasure to know. Um, got to know you over the years. I remember going to watch you at your call yeah. when you was fighting um, guys, relatively obscure opponents. Yeah. And you were breezing through them, man. And I remember thinking to myself, one day this guy's going to really do it, man. No, I appreciate and it. And so to be there that night and see you lift the British Light Heavyweight title was a real pleasure and honour. And I have to say as well, it wasn't just the fact that you won it. Yeah. It's the way you did it, man. Mm. You know what I mean? Everyone I talked to that night in the building was just raving about the performance. Because let's have it right, man. That was a, a lot of people saying that was a 50-50 fight. Yeah. Um, on, in the Jose bookies, Burton's was a good fighter. Himself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's still a good fighter. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Uh, in the bookies, on the bookies, like I think I was the favourite because of my record. I'm on form. Mm. But mm. like the consensus within the boxing you know, forum yeah, was right. like, oh, this might be a yeah. step too far yeah. for Dan, you know mm. what I mean? So it was good to go out there and um, prove everyone wrong, 
well, the doubt is wrong, and it's good for people like you. Like you said, you see me from yeah, your right. all times, yeah. you know, where I'm fighting yeah. guys you've never yeah. heard yeah, of. Right, and, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And in leisure centers, and then to see me at the SSC Arena live that's on Sky right. Sports, yeah. it's, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just truly blessed to, to do it in front of guys like yourselves and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. And it was a terrific atmosphere yeah. as well. Really good atmosphere. What's man. the plan from here then? Where are you aiming to go? Um, I'm, might I probably might defend the British title. I want to defend it, but we'll see if there's any opponents that um, I can fight for it. Um, if not, maybe try and get the Commonwealth. Yeah. Um, get the Commonwealth title, or yeah, push on to European and just keep climbing. Like keep my climbing. coach always says, you know, it's about steps, levels, yeah. and mm. I'm the first light heavyweight to collect all domestic um, titles. So, so and that's. My Our philosophy, on, do you know what I mean? Steps, so yeah. one step at a time. So That's hopefully it. we'll just keep climbing the ladder, keep climbing through the ranks and yeah, just picking up the belts and leaving um, a legacy because that's on, what man. I'm about, man. Yeah, and man. I noticed after you were calling out all their money, man. Yeah. Domestically, it's calling Cause them all out. Because for a long time, I don't get mentioned, you know? <laughs> exactly. do you know what I'm saying? I've been doing my work like just behind the scenes. Um, they're always calling out this name, that name and now they can't deny me. That's belt That's there the, says I'm number one in the country yeah. so you can't talk about the light heavies you can't. in Britain mentioned. without you mentioning my name do you know what I mean so yeah I've had to do it the hard way and yeah it's, it's made me who I am I'm very resilient so yeah man but like, to be fair though you you were calling them out but you did it in a respectful yeah, way yeah, you, yeah. Weren't, you weren't personal enough. no of course not it's all about ambition you want to get to the very 100%. top 100% and you were saying to them guys they got to come see me yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. my man's got the hard way they got to come it, see man. him 100% um, so on that uh, just briefly um, we know that there's a big uh, British showdown taking place this weekend at your way yep um, Anthony Yard, who's also an Arsenal fan, who's also a friend of AFTV, so obviously we're not going to mm. diss him. Yeah. Uh, he's fighting Lyndon Arthur. Um, they fought before. Lyndon Arthur won a close fight. They're having a rematch. Um, two questions. First, who you got yep. as a winner? Um, and secondly, would you like to take on the winner of that, that fight? Yeah, to answer your first question, I'm leaning more towards Yard, right. but I would not be surprised if Lyndon comes in and does an even better job on him, but I'm still leaning towards Yard. Mm. Um, I think Yard's got to come in, be very aggressive from the from the get go. He knows what he needs to do, but that also plays into Lyndon Arthur's hands because he knows what yeah. what he's going to be facing. And do you know what I mean? When you can, when you know what someone's going to do, you can plan accordingly. Mm. So yeah, I'm leaning towards Yard, but I won't be surprised if Lyndon wins. And I would love to face the winner. <laughs> I would yeah. love to face the winner. Um, like I said after my post-fight interview, look, I'm about the domestics, man. I'm not one of them ones that, yeah, I'll win the British and, yeah, let me fly overseas and yeah, fight yeah. someone nobody knows of. Yeah, I'm about yeah, the yeah, yeah. Eubank and Ben errors, like, yeah, you know, yeah, making yeah, yeah. some that's good... No, but that's refreshing to hear you say you know that, Because I mean? like you said, a lot of times, man win the British title yeah. and then yeah, they're off, off, you don't yeah, see them. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you're putting it out there on Front Street saying yeah, you want yeah. the smoke with De everyone. Definitely, mm. man. So you heard it here first, man. 100%, oh, man. Dan's in the house. That's and he's it. calling out all the names. <laughs> but listen, bro, <laughs> we thank move you, on. Man. But yeah, thank yeah. you, bro. We're going to come back to a little bit of boxing right yep. at the end of the show, man. Yeah, man. But um, you're also a big arsehole fan and we've got enough things to talk about, man. So, yep. um, yeah. So before I go there, just tell the people who don't know, because you have actually been on AFTV before, yep. a little bit about how you started getting into supporting Arsenal, how you... Um, um, How you came to support Arsenal growing up? I started supporting Arsenal. I'm of Nigerian descent, and obviously, Kanu was one of our strikers. He was very, very popular amongst the Nigerians, and he was smashing yeah, it anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, totally from there, I just, yeah, I just started supporting Arsenal, Ian Wright, and all yeah, them lot. Yeah. So, yeah, and as I grew up, there was quite a lot of um, black players on the, on the team straight up and yeah I just like I just yeah, like, and they were doing well so yeah I just yeah, got behind yeah, them. That, well that you story know I mean? could be repeated in many yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you said Ian Wright yeah. was like the flagship player for a lot of us growing up so yeah man makes sense okay moving on then um, those of you who watch the show regularly will know that we start off with what we call our news and notes which is just where we look at stories that may have made the headlines that we think of as of interest um, not too much going on in the world of football other than the games, but there was one story that caught my eye, Kurt, so I'm going to ask you about this briefly. Mm. The Ballon d'Or got announced. <laughs> 
And that's uh, some controversy going on there because Messi won it again. Mm. I think that's seven times he's won it now, yeah. Ballon d'Or. I must admit, man, I was a bit surprised and perplexed at that, you know what I mean? I mean, is anyone else allowed to win it apart from Messi and Ronaldo? <laughs> but anyway, a lot of people thought that Lewandowski or even Salah could have got it. They didn't get it. Messi got it. Now, I understand that you don't have a huge problem with that. No, so. I don't. I don't. <laughs> so tell the people. You're going to come for me in the comments, but I'm on it. <laughs> Vindicate why. Do, do you know what it is for me? Obviously, I had to pull up some receipts here. I have to bring out some facts. Messi, for me, even though people say Lewandowski scored more goals, cool, he scored more goals, but Messi won the Copa America, mm -hmm. which, you know, they haven't won it for nearly 30 years, Argentina, and to win it in Brazil as well. Sure. He got top goal scorer, top assist and player of the tournament. He scored 30 goals last year in the league for Barcelona in a, in a Barcelona team that's washed up, to be honest, at the moment. Yeah. Now, Lewandowski scored more goals in the German league. You know what Lewandowski does mm. every year. He did go a little bit further. I just think Messi's goals led to something greater than what Lewandowski's led to. And, you know, I think he got... It says here, look, he scored 40 goals in all competitions with 16 assists, so 56 goal contribution. Mm -hmm. Lewandowski was 62 goal contribution, so he's only six goals behind him in what he contributed. He also got 27 Man of the Match awards, Lewandowski got 13. Mm -hmm. And I think if you generally look back on the goals they scored last season, Messi's goals compared to Lewandowski's different level. Mm. No disrespect to Lewandowski, but mm. a lot of his goals are in the penalty area, typical striker's mm. goals. Mm. Messi's going on solo. <laughs> Lionel, man. Lionel, <laughs> Lionel. Well, I think you made a fairly cogent argument. I still would have gone for Lewandowski. Though, Go on. Yeah, Why yeah. would you have gone with him, though? No, the sheer amount of goals he scored and his mm. consistency. And, yeah. um, and for want of saying it better, like somebody else needs to win the award, man. But you gotta earn it. You know, they don't they're, they're, they're not handing know. you this belt car, it looks good, you gotta punch someone's Lewandowski, you gotta punch someone in the face. I, I, you know I, 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 mean? I do think Lewandowski was worthy of it. I mean yeah. and, and it's unfortunate as well, because if you go back to twenty twenty, he should have won it. He should have won it then. So yeah. why didn't they just include that the in the is, stats? I think Messi even said in the interview that he should have won it last year. The fact they just cancelled it just yeah, like just him got up. a little. But for me, Messi won two trophies. You know, Lewandowski won the Bundesliga. Bayern win the Bundesliga every year. I think he's a bit unfortunate, but for me, Messi, man. Is, is I think there's also, let's be honest, there's some political yeah, it's stuff a popularity going on there contest, because I think of there's X amount of journalists who vote for it, and from what I understand. Straight away, all the South American guys are just going to yeah, yeah. just going to vote on block for Messi, which strikes me as a little bit unfair. Dan, yeah. Messi or Lewandowski? Who would you have gone for? Messi, man. Straight yeah, man, no <laughs> messing around, no man. No two, no two ways about it, man. Yeah. Messi, man, all day long, man. So um, I'm very loyal as well. So not even just for what he's doing now, just for just past for, yeah, uh, performances, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I believe he's quite consistent. So, oh, he is, he is. You know I mean, mean, listen, so, man, he's a great, great player. Yeah. But I would say I'm disappointed that Mo Salah came in at seventh. Yeah, that was a bit mad. That was a bit But weird, like you said, I mean, from an Arsenal point of view, when Nedved won it ahead of Henri, Ballon oh, yeah, d'Or yeah, lost yeah. all seriousness <laughs> to me. It's a popularity contest. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know? Yeah, and I know Ronaldo wasn't pleased, was he? Yeah, well, I think, I think, I think Messi's probably ended the debate now, <laughs> aren't he, with Ronaldo 7-5 <laughs> on Ballon d'Or's. Well, you know what, you know, that's maybe a subject for another show, yeah, but yeah. I've got some thoughts on that, man. Oh, okay. I think You're Ronaldo's gonna... right up there alongside, possibly even better. But anyway, yeah, that's, for another, that's for another time. But thanks for that, guys. Yeah. Right, okay, moving on then to one of our main features of, of this show. Uh, every week, what we do, we will um, look back at Arsenal's last game. So it's a little review of Arsenal's last game. So um, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get going. So... At the weekend, we welcomed the richest club in the world, Newcastle, to the Emirates. Early Saturday afternoon kickoff. Um, the backdrop to this game was could Arsenal, after their humiliation against Liverpool, bounce back in fine style and beat Newcastle, who were without a win in the Premier League all season? Um, coming into this game, Newcastle were bottom of the Premier League. That being said, they've uh, appointed a new manager, Eddie Howe. Uh, they were better in their previous game, and they do have some pretty dangerous players. Notably, Alan St. Maxima and Callum Wilson, who on their day are proven match winners. So they do have dangers in their side. And there was that feeling that if Arsenal didn't approach the game in the right way, a bit like boxing, okay, if you don't yeah. have the right approach, you could come unstuck. Yeah. So mm. 
that was um, the thought process behind that game. Um, if I could just go quickly through the lineup, Arsenal lined up once again in what we call the 4 4 1 1 formation. In goal, Ramsdale, back four of Tavares, who uh, kept Tierney out, Gabriel, Ben White, Tommy Yasu. Midfield four of Emil Smith Rowe, Sambi Lokongo, Thomas Partey, and Saka. Up front, Lacazette dropped, which uh, surprised a few people. Martin Odegaard came in for him. And then the big man, or some might say not so big man, <laughs> Aubameyang up top. Um, so, yeah, so that was that. Uh, key moments of the game I'll go through quickly. Uh, first 30 minutes or so, I thought Newcastle actually did a fairly good job in nullifying us, although they weren't really that threatening. But I thought that they were defensively responsible and they kind of kept us at bay for a while. Um, 41st minute, Aubameyang had a great chance, um, seemed easier to score than miss. Yeah, but and a sitter, isn't it? Yeah, it was, <laughs> but he managed to miss it. So we go in at half time and one or two of us are looking at each other thinking, oh, it could be one of them days, man. I'm going to have to step it up. We did that and in the 56th minute we get a goal. Um, Emil Smith-Rowe and Tavares exchange passes. Tavares, beautiful reverse pass. Saka comes in, drills a low shot. A low left foot shot pass to Brusca. 64 minutes, Saka comes off. He gets replaced by Gabriel Martinelli. And within a couple of minutes of Gabriel Martinelli coming on the pitch, he scores a wonderful second goal. Um, it's 76 minutes. Abba completes a pretty miserable day. He gets taken off. Um, that's four games now without a goal for the big man. So he's struggling a bit there. Match receipts, shots on goal, Arsenal 24, Newcastle 9. Shots on target, Arsenal 6, Newcastle 5. Possession, Arsenal 66% to Newcastle's 34%. Pass accuracy, Arsenal 87% to Newcastle's 79%. So I think it's fair to say that Arsenal Dominated. were the mm. deserved winners. They came out on top in all those stats. So let's kick things off by talking about the game. I'm going to go with my football expert here. Curtis, your thoughts on the game? I mean, the first half was a bit of a snore fest, wasn't it? Half time, I'm sitting there like, yo, man, this, we got to step this up if we're going to win this one. But, you know, the second half, I thought we improved. We moved the ball a lot quicker. I think Newcastle, it was a low block. They just sat there and said, yeah. try and break us down. When you play against a team like, you've got to move the ball quickly. I thought we were too slow um, at moving the ball. Obviously, the goal, good little pass from Nuno Tavares, who I, I, I actually think Tavares was man of the match. Yeah, a lot I think of considering that. how he'd struggled the week before, he showed a lot of spirit to come back, mm. put in such a good performance. Um, and then obviously Saka scored, and then the second goal, Martinelli, man. I, mean, yeah, I was shouting down the house. I loved it. <laughs> you know me, I'm Martinelli FC, man. This yeah, brother yeah. needs game time on the pitch. He's a yeah. talent. Comes on, scores such a great goal, man. And you know, showed Aubameyang, you know, you know we're, you know we're team Aubameyang, but boy, man, I was struggling to defend him that day, but I still don't know how he missed that chance, but... To say you had a bad day in the office is probably an understatement. Mm. Um, if I could just go quickly to Dan, what you saw the game, what was your thoughts on the game, bro? Yeah, um, like you said, it was a bit um, boring in the first half, but I was happy with the possession that Arsenal mm. um, had, um, and then, yeah, that, the first goal that was I thought that was brilliant passing. Love that. It kind of reminded me of the old school Arsenal. You yeah, know how they yeah, used to yeah. pass around in a box. I thought it was excellent. And then yeah, like you said, Martinelli's goal, oh, man, right. like yeah. that was a beautiful, yeah, 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 beautiful goal. And I reiterate what he said. I think he needs more game time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When they're on form like that, I think you should just Put them out there, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. What was, was good for me with that goal is the fact that I think it was his second touch. Like, it just yeah. come on, right? He had a simple pass that he played and then the next touch he's threw on goal. And a lot of people would have put that in Rose. No, 100%. Think, for him to, to do that. Um, I've got to ask you, Curtis, what did you think of the... Uh, the lineup and the formation mm. used for that game. So he went from four four two back to like the four three four, three or whatever. Yeah. Four, well, I think three, it was three, a four four one one, but yeah. because Lacazette wasn't come playing, out. Odegaard was kind of uh, attacking midfielder, yeah, come yeah. striker. Behind the so they tinkered with it a little mm. bit. Was you happy with that? Before the game, I wasn't. I mean, he picked a team that I agreed with most of it. Odegaard coming in, I wasn't overly keen on, but I understand why he gave him an opportunity. He bought him from Real Madrid. He must have promised him game time. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't his best game, got no. to be honest. Uh, I think he struggled a little bit this season. 
wouldn't write him off completely. He's clearly a talented player, but for me, a little bit lightweight. Mm. Um, and I think um, in the Premier League, you've got to be able to handle yourself physically. Yeah. Premier League's unforgiving. I think at times he gets muscled a little bit, but um, yeah, I just I think looking ahead, he's going to have to look at the team because I think Martinelli's giving him a bit of a headache there for the Man United game. Mm, mm, mm. What about uh, Tierney? No Tierney. Uh, I think mm. that was the fourth game on a spin now. Yeah. Um, a lot of people raised their eyebrows when they saw the team sheet and Tierney went in. Especially as, let's face it... Um, he struggled the week yeah, before. Nuno had had a bit yeah. of a difficult game. Do you know what? I a think bit of a baptism of fire against Liverpool. But to be fair, he played really well in this game. I'm actually going to give Arteta credit, which I don't do that too often. <laughs> so did. you better clip this. Hey, watch yeah. it, man. Dan's uh, yeah, Dan, about... <laughs> Dan, Dan likes him and I heard he, he punches no, well. No. <laughs> Dan's... Just to, no. just, to, just, to, just to set it up, yeah. Dan made it be known when he came in here, man, that he's backing Arteta. Yeah, so yeah, I no. said, that's why I put Curtis on this side. So I thought I'd better it's tread carefully <laughs> today, man. I've it's seen not, that. It's, <laughs> it's not so much that I'm backing Arteta. It's just like, like I said, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm from like the sport where it's, uh, you know, it's an individual kind of sport. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm not too fond of like blaming. Blame, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, stuff yeah, like yeah. Yeah. if the team plays poor, we should be criticising the players like and yeah. stick it on them. That's what like, Kevin Campbell always says. Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? I'm not there for like, oh, when they do crap, yeah, we blame Arteta then. When we're doing all right, yeah, Arteta's really doing good. I don't really, I'm not really for it. So, it's not yeah. 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 so with that being said. Yeah, let me give him his credit. <laughs> <laughs> so with that yeah. being said, yeah. now I think he's going to see Curtis saying different tune. Yeah, right no, do you know what? Bro. No, because when I did a predicted lineup, I was like, you know what? Maybe bring Tierney back in. Tavares had a bad day at Anfield. You got sent maximum, Mr. Gucci headband, about to play <laughs> against him. But you know what? Fair play he stuck by him, and I yeah, thought yeah. Tavares, you know, played really well. I thought Sambi played really well. Yeah. A lot of people were saying Ainsley maybe should come in for him. So yeah, I give Arteta his due, man. So everyone who always says, you know, you're anti Arteta, I want to see some comments. This week, <laughs> clip that, you know. See that man's keeping it real. Yeah, I can't, man. can't doubt him for that. What about Lacazette? Though? I was, uh, mm. I must admit, I was a bit perplexed. I think with Lack, I think what people have to understand is he's probably going to leave in the summer. Mm. He's out of contract. So I think sometimes as a manager, when you know that a player's leaving in, in six months, you don't want them to be a main kind of figure in your team mm. as much because you think, well, he's going to leave a massive gap. I've got to figure out a different way. And Odegaard's got, what, four years left on his contract. So he's probably going to try and push him into the team mm. ahead of Lacquer. I think Lacquer's played well since he's come in, yeah, but yeah. I think you will see him rotated mm. as the season. I mean, I think my thoughts on that is with the Liverpool game, there was a number of players that didn't hit the levels. Mm. And Lacquer was one of them. But then you could go through the team and yeah, say the whole that team was a pretty probably. poor day. Yeah. So I must admit, when I saw he was left out, I did feel there was an element of scapegoat. Yeah. I thought, mm, is it fair to drop him? But, you know, Odegaard came in. Like you said, I didn't think he did that well, to be no. honest. But, you know, it is what it is. What, what was your thoughts on that, bro? Um, um, the Lacazette getting dropped and no tyranny. Was you OK with the manager's decisions yeah, on it? Def definitely. But like he said, um, he ain't got, he's out of contract. And I'm not really for, you know, if he's not... If he's not going to be playing, well, if he's going to be leaving, I think it does something with the morale as well. He's, I think he himself, like, you know, I'm yeah, going yeah, anyway, yeah, like, yeah, so. Yeah. And it, um, I'm a bit worried it can, you know, spread impact onto on the, the, team, on yeah, the yeah. impact on the team. Yeah, so yeah. just get the, the youngsters in, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Although, to be fair to Lacazette, he is one of those guys who does give his best normally. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of the attitude. senior players. But I hear your point. Yeah. Mm. You and Curtis are saying, look, if we're going to build, then we can start Might as well start doing looking it. at yeah, other yeah, players yeah. and start yeah. building from. So I get that. I get that. I'm not going to make up too much noise, mm. especially the fact that we won the game. Um, I've got to ask you though, man. And we talk about this pretty much every week: his performances. We I call it the Abba say, Watch. Yeah. Abamia, oh, man. Dear. No, no goals in four now, mm. and um, not just the no goals in four. Even though we're team of Bamiyang, me and Curtis, yeah. we love Bamiyang, yeah? I'm sure you do too. But yeah, I like his swag. Yeah. <laughs> but it has to be said, no goals in four. And a lot of people are saying, listen, when this man's not scoring, Doesn't his contribution him. is not that great. Although in more recent games, he has been putting in a lot of work. But um, I'm just going to... 
put it out there on Front Street, man. A lot of people <laughs> say you might be time to look <laughs> at another option up there. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, bro? I mean, I did a show yesterday where I basically spent half an hour trying to justify <laughs> why we should keep playing him, and I was, I was scrambling. I can't lie. Wow. Listen, I, so I, if you're scrambling, yeah, that's, I, I yeah. was, I was scrambling. Listen, I, what I will say, I don't think, I don't agree with the narrative that Aubameyang is finished. I don't yeah, agree with sure. that. You know, form, he had a bad season last year. I remember Eden Hazard having a terrible season when Mourinho got sacked the following year, he ripped the place up under Conte. Mm. It happens sometimes. Let's be honest, Arsenal are not the Arsenal of years ago. We don't mm. create loads of chances. We don't score loads of goals. I think he has suffered in the system. Mm. However, he's not performing at the standard that Aubameyang was at 18 mm. months ago when mm. he, you know, it mm. seemed like he scored every week. I think, look, you got whether we like it or not, he's not going anywhere. Mm. He's on three hundred grand a week. No one's going to sign him off you that deal. You wouldn't mind that, would you? Three hundred grand, thirty-two <laughs> years of age. So yeah. I think maybe he's got to freshen it up a little bit. You know, mm. whether whether that means you play Martinelli next to him, whether that means you take him out of the team. I don't know what that is, mm. but I think I don't think we can turn our backs on him. You know, he's mm. done more for us than most players have done. Um, but he is out of form. We can't, we can't, you know, deny mm. that he's not playing as well. So I'm going to put you on the spot, bro. We've got a game come which we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. Do you stick with him, or do you say to him, "Listen, man, it's not going your way. You need some time away from the spotlight. Maybe you sit him on the bench. I don't know. What's your thoughts? I'll play him. You play him. I play okay. Martinelli with him. Yeah. Yeah, I play Martinelli rather with than Laka. Rather than Laka, yeah. Him. I think against like Maguire, the fridge. You know, <laughs> not the most mobile of defenders, yeah. man. He wouldn't want to play against mm. Martinelli and that. But mm. I, I don't, I just don't think dropping Aubameyang is going to help him. Yeah, He's a very right. big yeah. character, you he know, is. that mm -hmm. I think it would damage him more than, more than anything. Would. And it might damage your team, because listen, he's not just Aubameyang, the top striker. Mm. He's also our captain, yeah. senior player, talisman, sure. very popular amongst the players, we're told. Um, I think if you drop him, you're making a big statement there, especially if they don't go home and win. Yeah. I think it could be quite a dangerous move for... Dan was talking earlier about the morale of the team being so important. So, me, I, I keep him. What about yourself, Dan? Would yeah, you? no, um, like you said, it happens sometimes, man. Like you said, Hazard had that yeah, shocking yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. season, next season, doing a madness. It happens. Um, and I think sometimes it can put a bit of pressure the longer that run yeah, yeah. continues the you know more pressure it can put on him. So I think just let it run its course, so, yeah. I think, man. Like you said, he's done more for the team than most That's players. Right, so, yeah. you know, this is our time to like <laughs> yeah. stick by him. Stick you know by I mean? him yeah, man. Bit, yeah. I always go by the adage, form is temporary, class is permanent. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's going through uh, a sort of indifferent run of form at the moment. I get it. He's not playing well. But listen, I don't think taking him out of the firing line is going to improve things. We've got a massive game coming up. Uh, this week and uh, I think you need your senior and your better players there and talking of massive games we're going to get into it now man ops of the week United the United, United. United. <laughs> our attention turns to Thursday Arsenal travel north to Manchester it's one of the biggest games of the Premier League uh, always is north versus south traditional rivals Arsenal versus Man United and there is some backdrop to this as well um we now that we know now that uh, Man United who dismissed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, they're on the verge of they have appointed an interim manager. Is it? I don't know if he's going to be at the game though. Is no, apparently, he? he's not going to be in charge. No, no, sure. no. Yeah, I think because of the, this uh, new stuff with the COVID, mm. he might not get his clearance in time. Um, but before I get Dan and Curtis's thoughts on that game, let me just bring up some match receipts. First up, Man United. So far this season, then United are currently eighth place in the table with 23 points. They've played 13 games so far. They've won five, drawn three and lost five. Um, decent draw at the weekend against Chelsea. Yeah. As we said, a lot of people thought they might come unstuck against Chelsea, given the form they're in, but they actually did quite well. Um, Arsenal, we are in fifth place with 23 points. Um, I said United had 23 points. I'm not sure if that's correct, actually, but I do know that they're eighth. But Arsenal definitely in Arsenal fifth. Arsenal have 28, yeah. you know. Uh, Arsenal won seven, lost four, drawn two. Um, head to head, played United obviously last season, played them twice. We did well against them actually. At home, we drew 0 0 and we beat them away from home. Um, there was no fan to that game, so it's a slightly different mm. um, backdrop to that. But um, let's, let's go with Curtis, he's our resident football man. Um, United on Thursday, United. man. Big game. Yeah. 
Um, what's your general thoughts on the game? I think it's a hard game. I do think it's a tough game. And I, I know United are out of form. And, uh, and I think a lot of Arsenal fans will be thinking we can go up there and get mm. something. And I do think we can get something. But it's also a dangerous game as well. You know, they've got a new manager. I know he's, he's not going to be in the dugout, but they know he's the... Interim manager. Yeah, interim manager. And um, Before we go any further, tell yeah. the people, you're the football man, here, mm. man. You're the expert. Rangnick or Rangnick? Yeah, it's Rangnick, Rangnick yeah. isn't it? So for those of us who don't know too much mm. about him, which I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there that don't know too much about him, mm. tell us a little bit about him. What's his strengths? Is well, he's, they say he's like the godfather of that, like, pressing style of football that, that Klopp's got at Liverpool. He's mm. kind of the guy who like Tuchel and Klopp learnt from in Germany. Oh, okay. Got a lot of experience. He, he knows how to like build a structure of a football club very well. Mm. He hasn't had huge success as an actual manager. He's, mm. he's done a lot as like director of football and mm. I think United are going to move him upstairs after six months mm. or something. So. Yeah, you know. So in that corporate world, he's almost like the consultant. Yeah, yeah, know, he's not kind the of manager. Yeah, not yeah. the manager. So <laughs> it'll be interesting how he gets on. But I think you know, Man United need footballing people in those positions. So, but um, yeah, we'll have to see how he does. Mm. So, what sort of team would you like to see Arsenal I mean, put out for this game? I saw that S Saka obviously came off injured, but apparently mm. he's, he's fit. They reckon for the game. Oh, good. I would like to see Martinelli come in. Like, for me, sometimes when a young player's at it and he's had that moment, I think the worst thing to do is sit him down and just mm. say, oh, just sit there and wait, don't mm. do that. Mm. Let him go. How do you find Wayne Rooney, Michael Owen, Rashford, you know, all these youngsters yeah. where you just got to throw them in sometimes? Yeah. I think Martinelli needs to start this game. I would play him. I would start mm. him against Man United. Um, I would potentially take that you? Oda goal. Do you start him? Do yeah, start no, him? Uh, uh, agree with what he said strike when the iron's hot man like mm. you know what i mean he's like you said he's had that you know played last week played good and um it's yeah he seems goal. like he's gonna great be on goal. form like yeah. and it's important that we get something out of this um this match um what would we, would we be for will we go into fourth you know what, if it plays out, yeah, 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 if it plays out then so, yeah, we could. it's, it's a big points. game. And, a big I, game. I, and I do think it is dangerous because Although Man United ain't been on form, look at who they've played though. Like who did they lose to? Man City, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, I mean they, they got smacked um, up by Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah, like yeah, yeah. these ain't crap teams, you yeah, know what I mean? True. So obviously we expect a lot from Manchester, but yeah, like yeah. they ain't been playing. No, like, I mean listen, they've they've got the players. It's just that it's yeah. not been ignited yet, mm. um, and I think that's a worry for a yeah. teams like us if they if they do get it right, then, then yeah, they're, exactly. they're quite a formidable team. So mm -hmm. we we were like we was hoping it would go under the radar mm. and they would keep Oli. I was actually when disappointed <laughs> when from an Arsenal was, point of view when he got sacked. <laughs> everyone was disappointed <laughs> apart from United fans. You got saying you wanted you to keep him. I wanted him there, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. There. The, and the thing is as well, Ronaldo obviously was on the bench at the weekend. He'll probably play on. Thursday, yeah, that's he's going to be fired up, and yeah. he's going to be like, and he always How does dare well this against guy yeah. put me on the bench? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Carrick, who's never been a manager, so he, you know he's going to try and take it out on us, isn't he? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to yeah, have yeah. to make sure we deal with him. Would you uh, keep faith with Tavares, or yeah. for a game like this, would you bring Tierney no, back? No, I keep Tavares in there. What yeah, about same. you? Then? Same, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's fair enough. Bit like what you were saying about Martinelli. If you've got a young guy who's coming and he's done well, yeah, to sort of. Let them go, man. Yeah, Let them play. Just, and yeah. a lot of the time, they want to prove themselves yeah, as well, right. man. They've got yeah. that hunger. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. they've got that hunger and that desire there, man. So, yeah. Um, any other changes or would you stick with the same? What kind of formation would you like to see? How, I, I'd, go how you similar, see I'd go similar to how we set up, but I would probably, I'd probably bring Martinelli in for, for Odegaard. That no, I mean, no, tactically. Tactically, so, I mean, he played as in like this 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the weekend. I played yeah. something similar to that. I think you could have Martinelli moving around Aubameyang, uh, Saka and Smith Rowe will play, Sambi and Partey, back four picks itself, so mm. I'd stick with that. I wouldn't change too much. Right, right. Um, yeah. So tactics, formation, is there anything else you think? Well, what about the danger? I mean, obviously oh, Ronaldo. Man, I mean, yeah, Ronaldo. Um, anyone else you think we need to give special consideration to? I mean, it'd be interesting who he picks because um, Sancho scored, didn't he, against Chelsea, but he took him off. So is he going to start him as well? Will Rashford start? Um, there, there's a number of players there. Bruno as well. Although Bruno hasn't done too much against Arsenal. Well. So yeah. Probably Rashford and... 
and Sancho, they're the other danger mm. players. Isn't it? If Sancho, that goal probably give him a lot of confidence. Um, and he, he'll probably also look at Tavares and think he's young, you know, his confidence is high, but he gets forward a lot. That's the yeah. only thing, so he might leave a bit of room. So I think Sancho yeah. as well, probably the other danger, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Right, okay. Um, now it only leads me to ask you, and you know me, when I ask you about Score predictions. predictions, I don't just say, who do you think's going to mm. win? I like to ask, who do you think's going to win, but why? So, um, right, we'll start, but we're going to start with our special guest this week, Dan. Uh -oh. So, you've heard the build-up, you've heard yeah. what Curtis has had to say, you've seen the games recently. Do you think Arsenal can go to United on Thursday and get a result? And if so, why? So, um, start off with who you think's going to win. I or think it's going to be a draw, you know. Mm. Yeah, is that mad? Do you think? No, no, <laughs> no, listen, no. no, no, that's what you no, think. Fair, that's man, it's no, but listen, you know what it is, right? We we ask people when they come on the yeah. show, we want them to be honest. Yeah, yeah we yeah. don't want them to come on and say Arsenal going to win three 0 yeah, You know, because yeah, I mean? yeah. anybody can do no, that. that. We I, want your honest. You know what I mean? I don't think there's going to be many goals scored. I mm. can see a one-one, mm. um, and be honest, I think we'll be happy with that going yeah. away. It's not a bad result. Yeah, is going it? to Old Trafford, you know, nicking a point. And um, I, what I can see, I can see us scoring first, starting off well, and then maybe the concentration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Down the stretch, and then we yeah, just can yeah, see. That's what yeah, that personally, yeah, that's yeah. what I, I, I can see happening. Now that's, you know who what? Knows? Hopefully they prove me wrong. Yeah. Actually, that's not far off from what I think. We're going to come to me later. Yeah. But we've got the big man in the house here, Mr. Curtis Shaw from <sighs> Curtis Shaw TV in the house. Tell the people, bro, um, what your prediction for the game is, but not just what your prediction, yeah, why? why you feel it will play out that way. Do you know what? Dan's kind of took what I was going to, you know, <laughs> I mean, took my smoke away <laughs> from him, man. You know, do you know what it is? It's just, we're winning games. We've been on a good run. I still kind of feel like we've got a little bit more to figure out before we're kind of there. And I think this get, I think it'll be a tough game. I mm. honestly think it'll be dealing with Ronaldo and people like that. Um, I'm going to go for a draw as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just think midweek at Old Trafford, it's a tough game. They're going to be fired up for it. They just got a draw against yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. Manager will be, yeah. whether he's there or not. They also um, got a decent result against Villarreal in the game before. Didn't they? Yeah, Carrick. yeah, so, yeah Carrick's unbeaten yeah, actually. Yeah. Carrick at the wheel. So yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going to go for a draw as well. Um, he went, well, I'm going to go for a Desmond. I'll go 2-2. <laughs> yeah. I'll Desmond. go 2-2. Two, two. I'll go 2-2, yeah. Two, two, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think a draw. I, listen, I, I hope we win. I hope we prove us wrong. But like you said, I think a draw would be a decent result. Yeah. We've got Everton next week. They're out of form. So mm. yeah, I'll go for a 2 I'm going to complete the set, guys. Uh, I'm going for a draw as well. I don't think we'll get beaten, but I think United, they have, there has been a bit of, I wouldn't say new manager bounce mm. because the interim. Um, and then, you know, you've got Rangnick coming in. Um, but they definitely, I watched them closely at the weekend in that Chelsea game. And defensively, they were a lot more responsible. Um, so they have got some momentum going into this game. They're at home uh, for the first time under Carrick and I think in the league. And I think, um, yeah, I think they might be difficult, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be a, a, a pretty difficult night for us. But I do think that there's enough momentum in our team and enough vibes and enough players playing well, yeah. especially the younger guys. Although Smith Rowe's dipped off a little bit in the last few weeks. Mm, had a couple of quiet games. Yeah, but anyway, there's enough players here. We spoke about Tavares and Martinelli and. Saka and people like that. I think we've got enough guys on form to go there. As the manager can put in place a good game plan. You, you yeah. know all about game plans, man. Of course. Mm. You've got to have a good game plan. If the players are disciplined enough to stick to it, we don't make any silly mistakes, get too rash early, give away any silly goals. I think if we stay focused, try and give the strikers something to feed off, I think we can go there and get a couple of goals. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, I'm going with Desmond as well. Yeah. Desmond, I'm going with Desmond, two Desmond two two, man. Yeah. Two all. So We'll see how that plays out, man. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be a good game. Yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward to it, man. Sure. The eyes of the world will be on that game on Thursday. And, um, yeah, look forward to that immensely. We will, of course, cover it in our next show. But as for this show, um, we are now coming to the end of the show. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Um, thanks very much for your continual support. I really appreciate it. 
thanks to Curtis, uh, as always, he's come on and given us his honest and forthright yeah. opinions, as he always does, and his expert analysis, which we appreciate. Yeah, and so to my man, Dan, man, thanks very much for coming yeah, down, bro. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. It's not often we yes. get superstars in the nah, house, man, but we got even. lucky. Thank yeah. you for having me. And um, yeah, hopefully I can get more Arsenal fans come down, support yeah, me, on, we shout down the house. Come on, bro. Come do you on, know what I mean? Bro. So yeah, yeah, man, I appreciate what, what it. What you will do before we promise that, before your next fight, your first yep. defence of the title. We'll have you back. Oh, wicked. And um, you can tell the people all oh, about the next it. fight, the, the next victim. Yeah. And you know what I mean? It's onwards and upwards from there. But no, just um, in closing, just tell the people what, if you even, obviously probably haven't got any immediate plans, but what you would like to be doing in the next uh, six months, a year. What, what's the plan? Yeah, to hopefully just be out as um, often as possible. Um, uh, trying to be out in early next year, want to defend the title or again, try and get the Commonwealth or who knows the European. Um, just give the fans like a good, you know, good nights of entertainment yeah, to be yeah. honest. That's what I'm mostly about, you know, who wants to go to boxing to just watch a ball fest, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's all about entertainment and yeah. I'm trying to provide that, give everyone their money's worth. Yeah. So. Yeah. And like I said, I was at that fight. No cap, man. You, yeah. you were brilliant. Oh, thank you. Um, the crowd. No, I'm not even just yeah. saying that. You, you know, Curtis, I've been yeah. telling you this from time. Um, the crowd that. were thoroughly entertained. It was a good crowd there. Yeah. And they enjoyed it, man. And, yeah, I mean, you got that style. If you ever watch Marvin Hagler, my <laughs> man is, is the Lewis of Hagler. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what he is, man. You know what I mean? From the shorts, his mindset, yeah. his demeanour. The way he goes about his work, yeah, man. Watch out for my guy. Thank you. But thank listen, you. man, thank you so much Take for coming. Yeah, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. Man. Love, man. Thank you. My man Curtis in the house, as I always, man. Really Respect. <laughs> um, thanks, guys, for watching. As I say every week, keep the show interactive. We'd love to hear what you guys think of what we spoke today. Do you think um, Arsenal can carry on this good run of form? OK, we lost to Liverpool, but it's only one defeat in 10. We're going to United, a big club. Can we go there and get something? We all think we can. We're stopping short of prediction of victory, but we think we can go there and get something. So thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe. Keep yourself safe, healthy, COVID-free. Forget about this new variant, man. Just go out there and do your thing. And um, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>